Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for this webinar Wednesday. Um, today, I'm here with my colleague, Holly French, and she is going to be talking with us about Outlook tips and tricks. And if you've seen Holly teach and you're here because you know what a wonderful instructor she is, welcome back. And if it's your first time having a Holly experience, you're, you're in for a treat. And, uh, especially this one, um, we actually asked Holly to give this webinar to the Accelerate staff. And I mean, we use Outlook all the time and we were still kind of like, what, you can do that, that's a thing. So um, I think you're gonna enjoy today's session very much and we will start here in just a moment. Um, just wanted to let you know that this session is being recorded. It will be up on our YouTube channel and it will be at accelerate.com slash library slash videos. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about Accelerate, my name's Anne, I've been with Accelerate for almost 12 years, but we've been in business for almost 20 years and we deliver a lot of training all over the US worldwide and now of course mostly online. Um, we, we also teach a lot of programming classes, of course the, the MS, MS Teams, Microsoft classes like uh, SharePoint, Power BI, Office 365, but we also teach um, data visualization and um, security classes and a whole lot more. Um, but today, of course, we're here to talk about Outlook, um, and we also have a lot of Microsoft 365 classes listed. If you go to our site at accelerate.com slash Microsoft dash Office dash 365 dash training, you'll see we have about 24 classes there, um, but any of them can be customized for your group of three or more, and we can teach that online or in person and Holly is actually really great at um, if you get her on a call to pinpoint what you need and to be able to customize that class. Holly's also back to teach some more public classes. So that's just open enrollment. If you just have one or two people that need to be trained, January 13th, she's doing an intro to Microsoft Teams planner and to do. And in February, we've got Power BI in a nutshell. Um, and Holly, Holly's been training with us for a long time. Um, she's got over 30 years of experience as a trainer. So you probably won't stump her. I don't know. I'm not saying try, but you probably won't. <laughs> she teaches all the, our Microsoft classes, SharePoint Teams, Power BI, Power Automate, and, and a lot of other things as well. Um, so let me go ahead and turn this over to Holly and let her start this. There we go. All right. and. Hopefully you should be good to go there. Oops, let's switch back. Hold on. I'm gonna switch not. Nah, there you go. So Anne, I'm gonna get confirmation from you. Do you see my uh, Outlook screen? I see your Outlook screen, yes. Okay, excellent. So welcome everyone. I actually am looking at the attendee list and I actually see some of you who are in my class this week. So thank you guys. Thank you for coming back. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm going to cut down, I've only got an hour here, um, and I'm gonna just kind of give you some um, notes here. I might be using a different Outlook than you, okay? I, I might have a newer version. I am um, updating my Outlook constantly, so I might, um, I show you how to use a button and you might not have it on your end, but don't worry about all that, right? Um, Microsoft is updating its products at an insane rate. So I have the newest version of Outlook, that's what I'm gonna say, and I'm using, um, uh, Office 365. So I have that version uh, that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, and the other thing is, uh, you know, I usually teach a half day of Outlook tips and tricks. It's a three hour class. Uh, here, we're going to cut it down and just show you a few of those options, right? Because we have an hour together. So we'll, let me go ahead and just kind of throw some things at you. And the goal of this webinar really is to just have everyone who's in this webinar learn at least one thing, but I'm hoping the more than one thing. Uh, learn to use Outlook in a way that you never knew it could do. And those are the topics that uh, I'm gonna hit upon. So we're gonna actually start with automation. Okay, now in any a Microsoft class that I teach, I actually set up and have everyone stop for a moment and have them set up a, a toolbar on the top of the screen. And that toolbar is actually called the Quick Access Toolbar. Now in the class, in the full-blown class, we spend a little bit more time with it. But here, I wanna just give you a little uh, a look at it. And I also wanna tell you that there are secret buttons in Outlook. So I'm gonna show you now two of my favorite secret buttons in Outlook that probably most of you have never seen before because they are secret buttons. So watch along with me. I'm actually talking about a toolbar that's sitting at the very, very left uh, top of your screen. 
okay? And you should see a little like drop down arrow up even above the word file and home. And if you click on that drop down arrow, it actually opens up the screen called uh, Customized Quick Access Toolbar. So that thing up there is the QAT, Quick Access Toolbar. And it's available in Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Word, and even in uh, Power BI and Power Query. So Microsoft is really going um, full fledged with this toolbar. Okay, now what you first thing you want to do, okay, is I highly recommend is that you find that little uh, drop down arrow and you switch it to show below the ribbon, very last command. And if you see what it does, it moves the toolbar to below the ribbon. And now I have a lot more room to add a lot more buttons to it. Now I also have to admit um, my other programs, my Excel QAT, my Word QAT, and my PowerPoint are loaded up more. I need more buttons in those systems. In Outlook, I don't ha need as many of the buttons, but let me show you how you um, add some buttons to it, okay? So once it's moved, I'm gonna click on the little drop down arrow. Now, if you guys have your own Outlook up on a different monitor, you're, you could follow along and set this up during the webinar if you would like, right? So I'm gonna click on the little drop down and I'm gonna start adding commands that I use all the time. So the print button, of course, I print out of Outlook. I don't usually save as in Outlook. I certainly do in Word and Excel, but I don't need it. Okay, here. Um, I'm gonna go to the reply. I'm gonna do this a little faster. I'm gonna add all these buttons that I think I need. Empty deleted items. Okay, now I think I've loaded up most of the buttons that I think I'm gonna use. Now I have to show you the secret, and I, I promise this is a secret. I need to show you that um, my two favorite secret buttons and how to get to them. Okay, Microsoft has been hiding buttons from you for a very long time. <laughs> and here's where you go. You click on the little drop down arrow again. You go down the more commands. And I think a lot of people find their way here. They get into more commands, but it's actually defaulting to popular commands. Well, that's actually the exact opposite of secrets, okay? So if we click on the drop down arrow and switch it to commands not in the ribbon, that equates to secrets. And again, every system has it. Um, and if you kind of look through, you can add whatever buttons you think you're gonna use. So I'm gonna show you again my two favorite buttons, okay? First, collapse all groups, okay? Now, I also wanna point out that my favorite button doesn't, uh, Microsoft doesn't seem to agree that it's a favorite button because they haven't even put an image on it. Okay, so I don't care. I'm still gonna double click on it and get it added to my own QAT. Now, since Microsoft didn't add an image, it comes with a blue ball, okay, but that's okay. Okay, next, I'm gonna go down to the E's and the opposite of collapse all groups is expand all groups. So I'm gonna double click, expand all groups, and that's it. Those are my two secret magical buttons. Okay, and now I'm done with setting up my QAT for the moment. So I'm gonna hit on okay. And now I can guarantee that you're going to reduce the amount of clicks in Outlook right now by using this QAT. Now, the last thing you want to do to be really quick about this is you want to take all those buttons that you use up on the ribbon and you want to add them down to the QAT. So you don't really have to slide between different ribbons anymore. Okay, so I'm going to just show you a couple of my favorite buttons, right, on the Home tab. And this might be hard to find on your own computer. I'm going to fess up and I have to do this fast. But one of my favorite buttons on the Home tab that not a lot of people know about, it's just kind of in the middle of the screen, it's near the Reply and Reply All, and it's called Reply with Meeting. And I love it so much, and it's so hard to find that I'm gonna right click on it and add it to the QAT. So now I can find it whenever I want, instantaneously. And what it really does is it actually allows you to take an email, and uh, it could have many people's names on that email, the CCs, the twos, it could have lots of people's names. And in one button, it converts it to a meeting and it takes everybody's email addresses and adds it to the meeting. So in the old days, we had to copy people's addresses and uh, convert it to a meeting. Now you don't. So there you go. That's one of my first magic buttons. Okay, the next magic button uh, that I really love is got a funnel on it, filter. So I don't know if you guys know, you know, you can filter just like kind of in Excel when you filter. Well, I love that button. So I'm going to right click and add that button. So now I have a filter button. 
So again, um, I'm going to let you decide what buttons you use a lot, uh, and I'm going to show you some tricks throughout this hour, uh, but that's kind of two of the ones that I love a lot. And I'll add some more throughout the session if we need it, but for now, I'm going to get off the QAT. I'm going to say it's set up and it's ready to roll. So now let's go ahead again, and first, I'm going to stop because I got to show you this before I forget. I have to show you what these two favorite blue ball buttons do, my two favorite secret buttons. Okay. Now watch this. Let's say I have a bunch of emails, okay? And these are just my example emails. And again, you can play with your own Outlook if you want to follow along with me here. Um, I could take a, a, a pretty uh, hefty bet that a lot of you, when you're trying to find an email, you just switch the sorting to who it's by from, okay? So the newest way to switch all of your emails and sort it by from is to click on this by date option in the middle of the screen and switch it to by from. Now that's great, okay? And they're all sorted by from, but okay, you're still dragging and scrolling through all of these emails and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So my pet peeve is scrolling. I, anytime I have to scroll, I have to find an automated way to do it. So watch this, okay? As soon as I switch to by from, I'm gonna click the first of the two blue balls called collapse all groups. And it cuts out <laughs> all of that scrolling. It groups it instead by from. So now it's much, much easier to just go to the group okay, by the person I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for all, meal, all emails from Microsoft Viva, I can then hit that little arrow and I can find those files. So that's simply all it does. It's a collapses all to help you find things. Now, when I found the thing I needed, and I want this, the computer to come back to normal, then you hit the second blue ball, which is called expand all groups. And they're both, it's all expanded back out the way it normally would have been. So I'm hoping that my two secret commands up there become your two favorite secret commands. Now let me try that one more time, instead of by from, what if I wanted to find all of my emails, okay, um, by category or by size or by subject? I can switch it to by subject, hit my first collapse all groups, collapses it down, and now I can find my subjects much faster. So I'm hoping again, that's our first secret. Uh, well, the QAT was really the first secret that helped me work uh, uh, extremely fast. And these two balls and these two buttons help me. Okay, let's move on. Next, I'm gonna head over to this uh, pane on the left side. Okay, we used to call it the navigation pane. It's now called the folder pane. I don't really care what you call it, but it's that pane on the left that we all know about. Okay. Um, there is an area that you should see up there called favorites. And that's what I wanna talk about because I actually use favorites a lot and it reduces um, a lot of my clicks in Outlook. So how do you use favorites if you haven't used them yet? So what I'm gonna do is let's pretend I just um, put, got put on a project. Okay, and it's it's called uh, Project uh, 202. I'm not very creative today, but let's call it Project 202. Now, the very first thing when I'm put on a project is I create a folder in Outlook called the name of the project. Then I might also open up Teams these days and create a team site called Project 202, and then start working on both the team site and Outlook. But let me, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna right click on my inbox. I'm gonna create a folder. I'm gonna call it Project. 202. Now, uh, unlike me, like I only have three uh, folders right here under my inbox. We know that's not true for probably all of you in this classroom. I bet you have hundreds of folders and then subfolders underneath that and subfolders underneath that. So the problem with creating a folder here is it might get lost because you have uh, so many other folders. And this project, oops, sorry, project 202, this project might be really important to me for the next month. So not only am I gonna create the folder, I'm then going to drag that folder and drop it up into favorites. So now I have it in two places. So now also it will be much, much faster to find because I literally, I only usually hold, um, put about four or five folders up in my favorites. And when I'm done with that project, I will remove it out of my favorites and then put another one up there that I'm working on. 
So I have to, t actually I max out at about, uh, I have to be honest, I think I max out about six. So anywhere from three to six folders I keep in my favorites. If you get too many, then you're just recreating your inbox and that's not efficient at all. Okay, so now again, when I get an email, so I'm gonna go back to my inbox. Let's say I get an email and I'm gonna pretend because I don't have a lot of great emails here. This is my testing system. Um, but I can take one of these emails that I receive and immediately just drag it into the project in my favorites, project 202. And the good news is, if you notice, it also drops it into the other, uh, the project 202 under the inbox because there's, it's just a link to it. So I'm hoping you can find your stuff faster when you start using favorites. Now, the other thing to be very, very careful though, if I'm gonna tell you how to use these fast things and to be efficient in, um, in Outlook, I need you to be safe about it. For instance, you, um, when it's time to delete uh, that folder up in my favorites, you don't want to delete it. If you delete it from your favorites, it deletes it from your inbox. And I'm pretty sure, again, that most of you never delete anything from your inbox. So you keep it forever. So what you want to do when it's time to remove something out of favorites, because you no longer need it up as a favorite, you would right click on it and you want to remove from favorites, okay? Very different than deleting the folder. So when I remove it from favorites, it's still in my inbox, but it's not up there anymore. So I'm all full, full if you haven't created any favorites, go and do them today and start using Outlook the faster way. Now I wanna head down to the buttons on the bottom of the folder pane. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm not, didn't mean to hover over that. But I've got showing, I've got four buttons showing down there. And if you look in the bottom of your Outlook, I don't know how many buttons you have showing down there. But if I widen my pane, let me get right on it, I could have more buttons show. So as soon as I widened my pane, it showed my five buttons. So there are more buttons that I want um, to demonstrate today because the fifth button is one of my favorites and most people don't even see it. Okay, now if you wide, if you're working on your own Outlook and you widened this pane and you still, no matter how wide you make it, you still don't see five buttons. Let me show you what you have to do, okay? Um, you have to click on that little dot, dot, dot that's down there in the bar and you have to jump into navigation options. Your system might be set up to only show four buttons or maybe even three. Okay, so at the very top, I've moved my maximum up to five. Okay, so that's why now I can see five buttons. And I'm gonna keep it this wide because again, one of my favorite buttons is the fifth one. So I'm gonna click on that one. I don't know if any of you are using Outlook for things other than email, but this is notes. So if you look at it, it's kind of just like desktop notes. So for all of you out there who are still writing on sticky notes, and then applying that sticky note to your monitor, you need to pull those off gently, pull them off, go here and create sticky notes for all those things. And um, what I create, and these are just kind of um, silly ones I've done in class before, but in my real computer, I have at least 20 sticky notes. I have sticky notes for all of my websites that I jump to. Okay, I have a sticky note for Accelerate and their website because I always have to jump there to look at my evals and look at my registration lists. So I have a separate sticky for just them. I have a sticky for all my travel rewards, which might have all of my um, you know, travel numbers on it. So I will let you decide what's to, what you need to put on your sticky notes, but I use it as a very powerful tool. Okay, Instead of having to go find that email that had my travel information on it, I just jump to notes. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back to the uh, mail button down there. And I'm gonna talk about another little secret that I use avidly, okay? I'm that type of person that I need my calendar up on my screen at all times. Because in my little world, I receive emails from lots of different people, including from uh, uh, everyone at Accelerate, I receive emails that say, can you teach this day? Can you teach this day? Okay, can you put this on your calendar? We want you to teach this day, okay? So they send it as an email. They don't send it as an invite. So before I respond to that email, I have to check my calendar. So we all know in the room probably that when you click on the calendar button on the bottom, 
it shows your calendar, but it doesn't show your email anymore. Okay, so what I do is instead, now I'm going to switch back to my uh, my email. I need both on my screen at once. So I never click on the calendar button. I right click on the calendar button. So I'm going to right click down there and you have a secret little menu that pops up and I open the calendar in a new window. That's one of one of my favorite shortcuts in Outlook because I use it on an hourly basis. And there you go. I can move it around and I can have my calendar and my email on the same screen. Now I'm lucky enough to have two monitors in my life. I actually have three monitors in my life. So what I use this for is I open up my calendar in a separate window and then I just drag the calendar over my second monitor. So all day long, I have my email on one screen, I have my calendar on another screen and, my, and I have my Teams uh, application open. And that's how I work these days. Okay. So I am hoping again that that helps you out, some of you too, to be more efficient because today's session is all about uh, being more efficient in Outlook because we all know how to use email. I'm just not so sure we're using it efficiently. Okay, now I'm gonna close my calendar for now and I'm back to my email system. So that's enough kind of with the navigation pane on the side. Those are some of my shortcuts there. I wanna move over and show you another, uh, whoops, I don't, hold on, hold on. There we go. I want to um, show you another um, a, a feature in Outlook that might help some of you, and it's hidden. Okay, I want to show you, I'm going to jump over to the View tab on my Outlook screen. Um, did you guys know that there used to be a fourth pane in Outlook, and Microsoft turned it off for you? And some people liked it. Okay, It was called the To-Do Bar. Okay, And again, for me, it's turned off. If you want to turn it back on again and you think you might like it, you have to go to the View tab. You have to find the button called To Do Bar, the little button there, and click on. And I'm going to add some things to my To Do Bar. So I'm going to go add the calendar to it. And there it is. Now it shows over on the fourth pane. So you probably either love it or don't need it. It's one of those things, and all of you can make your own decisions, right? We're just throwing out a lot of concepts to you and uh, figuring out how to get more efficient here. Now, you can add more things to the calendar, to, to the to-do bar. I'm going to go back up to that button and add my uh, tasks also. So while I'm watching my email and responding to my email, I can see my appointments that are coming up, and I can also see my tasks that I have to do, all in one screen. Now, for reason, for, I used to love that. I used to have it on all the time, okay, until the ability came out, well, actually, until I got two monitors and the ability to put my calendar on a separate window. Then, personally, I don't need my to-do bar anymore, and that's why I have turned it off. So, you can make your own decision there, but I'm going to go back and turn it off again. I'm going to go up to my to-do bar, and I'm going to hit the off. And then realign my panes, good. Because when I need my calendar, I need it bigger and better. So I would right click and open it as a separate window. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the home tab on the top so our, our screens look similar. Okay. And let's move on to talking about dragging. Okay, I drag and drop all the time. So let's make sure you guys know even what I mean. Okay. So we're going to go back. I'm going to go back to my inbox and I have an email right here from software on the go. Okay. Now let's, and I'm, I'll let you read it. Um, let's pretend that that's a new vendor of mine. Okay. So they want to deal, it's from Joe and he wants to work with me more. Okay. And it's not a guy from inside my company. It's an outside vendor. Okay. And I know I'm going to be working with him a lot in the future. So I will immediately take that email and drag it and drop it on the people button on the lower left. Okay, and let go. And, it's, and it automatically adds them to my contact book. So the next time I can find them very easily. Now, not only does it add it to my contact book, okay, it stores the original email, okay, in the contact as a note. Now, I love that part. Because most of the time when a new vendor is working with me, I tell them, please send me an email introducing yourself and include all of your contact information, cell phones, address, anything I need to know. 
they send me the email and then I drag it and drop it into my people button and my contacts book. And now it's stored forever. Okay, now I'm gonna close that and not, uh, sure, I'm gonna save and close that. And I'm back in my email. Now let's drag and drop some more. What if I have an email again, same email, software on the go, and we're gonna have to do a little pretending here, right? Uh, let's say someone sent me an email and says, can you train, uh, are you available on this day for a training class? Uh, I'm gonna probably reply back, yes, okay? But I want that email then moved to my calendar. So my, because it, it wasn't an invite, it was just an email. So I will take that email, drag it, and drop it on the lower left, and drop it onto my calendar. And it converts it from an email to a calendar appointment. Now, of course, it doesn't know what date and time it was meaning, so I still have to fill all that. But I have the note, I have the actual email down below so I can read through it and remind myself on what day they were trying to uh, book me for. So I love dragging and dropping in Outlook. Okay, I'm gonna close that and not save it for now. Now, I wanna go the opposite way. What if you're spending time in your contacts book? Okay, so I'm gonna click again, quickly click on that people button on the bottom left. I'm gonna switch to my personal contacts book. And I have a couple of things here. First of all, I have that person I just added. Okay, software on the go. And I have a group, okay, called training group. Okay, so what, if, so what you can do is if I'm in my contact book and I need to email, uh, somebody in it, I can literally just take that contact, drag it, and drop it to the email button. And it generates an email for them. So I think that's it with my dragging and dropping. Um, I go both ways, okay? And I drag between email, between calendar, between um, people, my contacts book. Okay. And hopefully, again, you just play after this webinar. Now I'm going to go back to my email. Click switch back to my email and I'm back in my main email system and I'm going to keep going on. I'm going to hit, I think, what is the most important thing to discuss in Outlook. Okay, out of everything else we've discussed, the most important thing is searching better. I think most people lose most of their time all day in Outlook by trying to find things. And especially the longer you've worked for your organization, the harder it is to find anything because it's all over the place. And if some of you are smiling and shaking your head, yes, then I'm with you, okay? Um, so I need to spend a little bit of time and showing you some of my searching secrets. Now, if you do take the three-hour class, I will show you more, I promise. But let me intrigue you a little. Let me show you some of the things, some of the ways that has really helped me find things, okay? So let's start with, if I receive an email from someone, and, you know, they're talking about, you know, remember we were going to do this? Okay, we talked about it a month ago. In my head, I'm thinking, no, I'm sorry. I don't remember what we talked about a month ago. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is find all of the other emails in the system that had to do uh, with that conversation. So what the first scenario I'm going to give you is what if you receive an email and it's on top of your inbox? but you're trying to quickly find all of the other emails in that conversation, both uh, the ones you sent having to do with that topic and the ones you received, okay? The quickest way to do that okay, is to right click on that email. Now, I'm sorry, again, I don't think I have a good example here, but I'm gonna just keep showing you, okay? I'm gonna right click on that email and I'm gonna go to find related. I can't brag enough about this find related. I, I, I'm hoping everyone in the room after this webinar is going to start using it almost exclusively. Okay. And there's two options under find related. Okay. One of them is messages in this conversation. And the other one is messages from this person. You know, those are two opposite things, right? Messages in this conversation means all of those um, messages that went back and forth having to do with this one conversation. And it's very quick, it's, it even includes, it searches your uh, sent box, all messages in the conversation. So I'm gonna click on messages in this conversation. And there you go, it finds them. Now again, this is duplicate, don't even worry about that, uh, but it will show you all the email messages in the conversation. It is the fastest way to look for a conversation.
Now, if you notice when it does it though, it does use the, the search bar up on the top. It puts things up there for you though, so that you don't have to use that search box. Okay, now I'm gonna close that search. I'm gonna um, hit the X for the search bar and I'm back to my normal email. Now, what if I wasn't looking for a particular conversation again? What if I was just looking for all the messages that that person has ever sent me? Okay, then I would right click, go to find related and choose messages from sender. And that's anything in my inbox at this point that that person has, uh, that has come from that person. And it's really quick, it's really fast. Okay, it finds all the options. It fills in the search box for me up on the top. Okay, and it finds them instantaneously. So it's really nice again, okay, on what it found. Okay, so I'm gonna close that search again, hit the X on the search bar, and I'm back to my inbox. So I, with that one little, I, I usually have show about six different ways of searching better, and that was one of them, okay, using the right click to search. Now, let's go back to that search bar that we've talked about. I think so many people use the search bar. Um, I think most of the time you just click up in that search bar and you just type in something. Um, and that's probably the only way that you're searching for emails. And that's probably why it's taking long. <laughs> it might be taking you too long to find things. But let me reproduce that, okay? Uh, let me just click up in that search bar up on the top and I'm gonna type in something like the word training. I don't have many emails in this, oh, there it goes, okay. And it found all my emails that supposedly have the word training in it. But we all know in the room, it usually finds way too much. It finds, and we don't even know why it hits some emails, okay? We don't even find the word training anywhere in the email, but supposedly it, it finds it. And now you're left by scrolling through them all and trying to find the one line. So that is the least efficient way, excuse me, hold on a second. That is the least efficient way to search, even though 99% of the people in Outlook do it that way. Okay, so we're gonna clear that search and we're gonna try to break your habit, okay? So instead of clicking up in the search bar and typing something, here are some of the more um, modern approaches to searching. Okay, so, and, and actually this is very uh, modern. This is just a, a, cur a change occurred just recently to make this work better. So instead of uh, typing in the search box, you're gonna click up in that search box and you can hit the drop down arrow. If you look at the drop down arrow, if you click it, it allows you to fill in better criteria. So you can fill in whether you want attachments, whether you want to find anything with attachments. You can fill in uh, the, the from option. You can fill in if the body has words in it, the subject line has words in it, okay? So it is definitely a way to, you spend a little bit more time putting in your parameters, but it definitely finds a better um, hit list. It really uh, hones in on the email messages that you're trying to find. So that's your second option, okay? Besides right-clicking and using the options I showed you earlier. Now I'm gonna actually uh, just click on the up arrow and get that off the screen. Now I'm gonna show you one more, okay? Out of all those six and seven options, again, I, I run out of time in this one hour. So I'm gonna show you just one other, and it's one of my favorites, okay? I wanna show you the, um, the feature we call search folders. Okay. And again, not many people know about them. I don't know why uh, Microsoft tends to keep this a secret. But search folders are not where you think they are. Okay, Search folders are on the left pane, the folder pane on the left. And if you scroll all the way down at the bottom of your uh, folder pane, you should all have an option called search folders down there. Now, whether you're using them or not is questionable but you should all see the words search folders. Now, if you see a little uh, up arrow or a down arrow beside it, you can click on it and you can see what search folders have been created. Now, I have to tell you, some of you, when you look, okay, right now, some of you might have search folders, but you've never created them or used them. That means when your organization installed Outlook, 
okay, for you, it created some of those search folders for you, and they never told you about them, so you, you, you may never use them. So I want to, to get you to start using them more. Now, I'm not sure you're going to use the ones that they gave you, okay, uh, but I'm going to show you how to create your own search folders. And here's the thing. If I receive a lot of emails from one person, you know, choose your manager's name. Okay, I'm going to choose this person software on the go. I'm going to say that I receive a lot of emails from that person. And I want to, uh, you know, three times a day, I'm always searching for emails from that person. That's the person that you want to create a search folder for. Okay, so to start the whole process, you really just right click on those words over there, search folder. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a brand new search folder. Now, search folders can do a lot of things. Again, it can do all of these different things. But what I want it to do right now for my example for you guys, I want it to just show me all my mail from a specific person. Now, there is a from and to, so it will look through my uh, sent messages too. So it's pretty amazing what it can do. Sure, I'm going to actually, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to have it do um, search for all me emails from or to this specific person. Then I'm going to hit the choose button and choose the person I'm talking about. And in my case, I'm going to use software on the go that I just added to my contacts book. Okay, there we go. I found my person. And that's it. You just hit okay. And it's done. And now, whenever I need to find emails from that person, I literally just click on it. And it's not really a folder. They call it a search folder. It's really not. If you're a little bit more technical about it, if anyone in the room understands this, it's really just an index that it creates. So literally every time you click on it, it researches. Okay. And it's so it's instantaneous searches. It's always the the um search it's searching all of the folders. So it's searching all of your subfolders. Okay, and it searches the fastest method possible because it's an index. So I don't know, in my real computer again, I have about 10 search folders, okay, based on people's names that I search for all the time. Now, if this search is really, really important to me and I click on it daily, if you were in my classroom right now, I'd stop and ask you a question and I would wait for all of you to respond to this. But since we're in a webinar and you're just listening, okay, I'm going to tell you what I would do if this, if this search folder was really important to me and I use it multiple times a day, I would drag it up and put it up into my folders, into my favorites. And now it's right at the top of my screen. I can run it anytime I want. Click on it and it should find it. Okay, so I'm hoping, I mean, I'm, I know I'm running through this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna keep running for, through about 15 more minutes and then we're gonna hand it back over to Anne to finish up the class. Okay, but I'm hoping I've already improved and changed the way you search for things. Okay, and again, right now, I'm gonna clean up this thing in favorites that I did by right clicking and remove from favorites. So now it's still on the bottom of the screen. Okay, I'm heading back. To my inbox. Okay. Now I want to show you one other trick that I did for um, searching, and then I promise I will be done. But it is the most popular subject of all time: searching in email. So I'm going to hit one more, and this is actually a fairly advanced one. I don't know if um, everyone in the room is going to do this, or, or if you're even going to follow along with me right now. But here's the thing. I tell people again not to tent, not to use this search box up here because it doesn't do everything I need it to do, right? Instead, I don't know if you can see it on my screen, but I've added an additional search ribbon. Now, if you look on the top of your Outlook, if you just click on an on a, um, email, any email within your system, and look up to your ribbons, I am pretty sure no one has a search ribbon because Microsoft does not give you a search ribbon until you click in the search box. As soon as you click in the search box, then it gives you a search ribbon. And that's too late for me. 
I want my search ribbon all the time on the screen. I, I don't want it just to show up when I click in the search box. That's how much I detest the search box, okay? So I'm gonna clear what I've just done. And I'm gonna show you how to add an additional secret ribbon to your Outlook system to make you more efficient, okay? So here we go. You're, I'm gonna pretend and you're gonna pretend that I don't already have this search ribbon. You're gonna pretend that it's not there, just like your systems, okay? And I need to quickly get into an area to customize my ribbon up there, okay? So what I tend to do is if I wanted to add a new ribbon up to the top, I just right click somewhere up there. Whoops, right click a little bit farther down, right click on a button. And don't go too quickly through this because be careful which option you're looking for right now. We're looking for the option called customize the ribbon. Okay, right? so I'm gonna jump into customize the ribbon. And what I normally do is if I want my this new ribbon that I'm gonna add in, if I want it to be the last ribbon, okay, showing on the screen, then I'm gonna scroll all the way down on the right and I'm gonna click. Uh, let's pretend that wasn't there at the search. And I'm gonna click on the words, the last ribbon that is showing on the bottom of the right. I'm gonna pretend my last ribbon is called Outlook Beta. I'm just gonna select those words. Then I'm gonna go over to the left and go find my secret ribbon. Okay. Um, if you notice again, it's, it's, uh, there's, it's showing you popular commands right now. But if I click the drop down ribbon, I can switch it to um, tool tabs. And there's a lot more tabs that you probably don't know about. Okay. And one of them is called search. So I'm going to click on those words search. And then I'm going to hit the add button in the middle of the screen. And it's not hard. You only have to do it once. And when you do that, you will then see a new option on the right called search custom. And again, let me show you what it does. I'm gonna hit the okay button. And now permanently, I have a search ribbon available to me whenever I need it. So I tend to go there instead of using the search box. So I click on that and I have buttons to help me search. And again, it's really nice because I spend a little bit more time figuring out what I'm trying to search for, but the hits that it finds are very accurate. So I spend less time on sifting through all of my emails. So if I was looking for all the emails from a certain person, then I would hit the from button. And if you notice, look what it does again. Using the button, it then writes the code for me up in the search box. So it's still using the search box, it's just I'm not typing up there. Now it puts a little code in from, and I, I apologize, I'm sorry, I am typing. At this point, it's waiting for me to tell it who I'm trying to search from. So I'm gonna say I'm searching from someone called software. Software on the go. Okay, yep. Now let's say it finds a whole bunch of uh, emails and I need to search further, right? I only want to find all emails from this person that have attachments. So you then just hit another button, has attachments. And I'm, I'm sorry, unfortunately at the moment I don't, but it's, it's, you just keep adding buttons to the search. Okay, and when you're done with it, there's a nice button, okay, called close search. So I tend to use the search ribbon more than I use the search box and I find my hits very, very quickly. Now, the other thing, if you haven't looked yet, okay, and I'm, because I'm going so fast through this stuff, but look at, you can also, the search ribbon allows us to change where we're looking, right? Either all mailboxes or current, which is hard for some of you to, to switch that, okay? Um, subfolders, all of that. So I, I love this little ribbon, the search ribbon. I'm gonna close my search box and it's up there whenever I need it. Okay, I am done with searching for now. Okay, I'm hoping I've already changed your life, but let's go ahead now and show you some more things in Outlook. So I went ahead actually over to the calendar for a moment, and I wanna show you just some really quick shortcut ways of using the calendar. So I'm gonna 
switch to the calendar button. Okay. Now again, I have the uh, latest version of Outlook, so I might have just maybe a few more buttons than you do uh, up on the top, but let's just, just let's go over some things. When you're in your calendar, you might think that you only have these views, right? You have a day view, so I'm gonna switch to my day. You have a work week view, so it switches, it shows five days. You have a week view, which shows seven days, and then you have a month view, which shows the whole month. But it, it, there is another view that a lot of people, I don't think are taking advantage of and using, it's called schedule view. It just kind of switches. It puts the dates across and the uh, uh, the calendars down the side. It, it, it uh, switches the view a little, but that's not what I want to talk about. I'm going to go back to the day view for a moment. What if, okay, Anne, who's on the call with us today, what if Anne says, Holly, what are you doing the next three Fridays? So I'm going to head over to this navigator, we call it, in the top right of the screen, and I'm going to click on the 17th to see what I'm doing. But she said the next three Fridays. So I'm going to do a control click on the 24th, Control click on the 31st, and I'm now showing three Fridays in a row. So believe it or not, and this has been a, available for a long time, it's just if you never took a class or you never, you know, sat with someone who knew this, you may not have known this trick. Uh, but I can create a view any way I want. I can include whatever days I want. Now let's expand it again. Let's Anne says, well, okay, well that's not enough. Can you then show me what are you doing on the uh, December 7th? So I just Control click. December 7th. So I'm showing four Fridays in a row. So I love it. It's beautiful. Now, how do you turn it off? Well, it's simple. You just do a regular click on one of the days again, and it's turned off. So I'm back to the 17th. Now, what if Anne again calls me and says, calls me the next minute and says, okay, well, what are you doing um, uh, and what's your availab availability from the 22nd through the 29th? Okay, well, I'm going to click on the 22nd in my navigator, and I'm going to shift click on the 29th, and it just shows those days from the 22nd to the 29th. If she says, that's not enough availability, can you extend it out to the 31st? I just go and shift click on the 31st, and now I'm showing all of those days. So we're using all of the shortcuts that we've known forever, the control click and the shift click, but we're using it on this navigator, what we call the date navigator, to help us find things again, and this time on the calendar. Okay, I'm gonna turn it all off again, and I'm gonna just click on the 17th, and I'm back. One more trick in this navigator, because it might be new to so many of you. Okay, what if she really, Anne is really pushing it, she wants to know what I'm doing for the three weeks, starting on the 19th, okay? What I can do is move my mouse into the margin of the navigator. And I know I'm in the correct spot because my mouse is pointing towards the dates, okay? I'm right, and now I'm not in the right spot. My mouse is pointing away from the dates, but I move it a little closer it points towards the dates. Once it does that, I can click and drag. And now it's showing three weeks worth of information. So welcome to sign of some of the tricks in the calendar. Okay, and again, I tend to use these quite a lot. Okay, I'm heading back, okay, to the email button. And I'm back to my email system. Now I've only got about, you know, five, you know, eight minutes left here before Anne's going to conclude here. Let me show you another secret uh, quick access toolbar, another QAT. I don't know if you know it, but there are actually two QATs in Outlook. And let me prove that to you. Okay. We set up our QAT on the top of the screen to make us work faster, right, and help us be more efficient. But as soon as I uh, create a new email, so I'm gonna hit the new email button. No trick, I'm just gonna hit the new email and I'm gonna start creating a new email. Okay, Oop, hold on, I have to turn mine back off again. Hold on, give me a minute. <laughs> when you create a new email, it has another QAT. 
up there on the top of the screen, a separate QAT. So it's actually, you actually have to set up two separate ones in Outlook. And the reason why is because when you create an email, you're actually using Word as your editor. So you have to set up the second QAT to help you work better and faster. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did when I started this webinar. I'm gonna set up this QAT. Okay, so this is actually a nice little finishing of this class. It's, it circles us back around setting up your another QAT. So I'm gonna click that little drop down arrow and you have to do it while you're creating an email. Okay, you only have to do it once. I'm gonna say show below the ribbon. It moves it down below. I'm gonna click on the arrow, the drop down arrow, start adding some buttons to it. Print preview, sure. Uh, undo, of course I need the undo button and the redo. Okay, the forward, the delete, I could do all that. So now again, it's faster to create emails also, not just organize them and move them and delete them, but it's faster now to create them. Okay, now I'm gonna make this window just a little bit bigger so you can see my buttons up on the top. There is a lot of buttons on the screen when you're creating an email. I don't know if anyone's been watching or you just do your old fashioned way, just click, type, click, type, hit the send. Uh, but I wanna show you some of the new features that have come out, okay? So I'm gonna put my cursor kind of down below in the body of the message. If you don't put it down below in the body, a lot of the new buttons will be dimmed out and unavailable. So you gotta move down into the body of the message. And let me just show you some of these things. For instance, okay, oh, didn't need to do that again, hold on. For instance, oops, sorry, here we go. Um, you can get, um, you can dictate, you know, now. If you turn on the dictation, uh, you can speak into your microphone and it will write your emails for you. It is, isn't that nice? <laughs> so yeah, don't even have to type anymore. Okay, so that's a nice new button. If you think you're gonna use it a lot and you love it, then I would probably right click and add it to the QAT. And now you again, your second QAT is here and you can add a whole bunch of buttons. I'm gonna go over to the um, insert button and this is available again when you're creating new stuff. Okay, there's a lot more buttons, newer buttons in here, okay, than you may have seen before. I can go get screenshots. That's been around a little while, but I don't need snag it or anything anymore. I can get my own screenshots. Uh, inserting uh, shapes, icons, and 3D models is all new. So if you're that type of person who is really putting in a lot of stuff into your emails, you might wanna spend a minute and look at some of these new features. But a great one to end off today's class with is something we call quick parts, okay? What if you have a sentence or even a paragraph that you consistently insert in a lot of your emails? So I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say thank you very much for attending my class. I'm gonna state that I say that a lot, okay? And I use it several times a day. So what I can do is type it into my pretend email here. I'm gonna then select that phrase and I'm gonna go up to quick parts. Okay, well again, it's on the insert menu and it's called quick parts. And it allows me to save this sentence or this paragraph somewhere. And on the very bottom of the choice, it says save selection to quick part gallery. So I'm gonna click on that. Now you can put a real name to it instead of thank you very much. I might call it T-Y-V-M. Thank you very much, T-Y-V-M. Okay, hit the okay. And now it's saved forever. Okay, and not only is it saved in Outlook, it's saved in Word because I'm using Word right now to create my emails. So um, let's say this isn't, the sentence isn't there. And now I need to call it up. First of all, if you remember what you called it, <laughs> T-Y-V-M, I uh, didn't do it. <laughs> okay, um, but if you don't remember what it was called, you just go back up to that quick parts button and all of your quick notes are here. So I can click on my second one, thank you very much. Okay, actually I have a bunch of them, thank yous. I have privacy messages, I have thank yous with my email. Okay, I have lots of different thank yous. I have conference calls, 
Okay, so I'm going to choose this, thank you. And it just inserts it. So I think that's really efficient to save all of those sentences and paragraphs that you use a lot in your emails. You save them as a quick part. Okay, it is four minutes of before we end this class. So I'm going to uh, quiet this down. I'm going to close this email and not save it. I'm going to head back to my main screen. Uh, and there's four minutes left. You are welcome to take it back if you need it to finish up your session. Holly, thank you so much. You did have a couple questions. If I don't know if you've got um, a little, just you know, a, a minute or two. If you sure. could just look in the questions panel, or I can read them to you. Why don't you um, read them to me? I'm sorry, I have not okay. been watching them. Go no ahead. problem. And um, also, if we don't get to all of them, we can. This is all being recorded anyway, so we've got the questions, and we can we can get back to folks. Um, sure. So, is is there a way um, to connect an email to a note directly? Mm. An email to a note directly. So if I had an email, I think maybe you asked that before I taught you quick parts. Maybe you're storing something in a note that you want to add into an email. And I'm thinking it's quick parts that is your answer, if that's what you're trying to do. But if I take like one of my notes here and I drag and drop it to the email, that's what it did. So yes, I can save words in a note and then drag it and drop it into an email and it and it saves it there. I believe that's what they're talking about. Okay. Um, great. That was Let's an excellent see. question. Right. <laughs> um, is there a way to limit search to, to a data range? Um, I mean, for a example, date probably, right? A oh, date range? Maybe so. Um, for example, yes, date range. For example, show me emails from 2015 to 2017. So yes, date yeah. range. And there's lots of ways, but I think also, again, you pro I probably showed it after you asked, but the probably the best way for a date search is to uh, click up in that search box on the top and use the drop down arrow. They have uh, dates there, receive date, and uh, start date and finish date. So yes, that's probably the fastest way to search by dates is to use the drop down arrow in the search box. Okay, what you what else Great. you got, Anne? Okay, uh, any way to change the default time for the delay delivery command? Who? No one really <laughs> even uses delay delivery anymore, but. What, you, what they're talking about is I'm going to create a new email. So I'm going to go back home, create a new email, go over to options, and there's an option called delay delivery. And you can um, delay it until a certain time. Um, and right now, uh, the changing the do not deliver before. Oof. Um, I have to say, I don't think I've ever got that question before. I don't think I've ever changed the defaults there. Um, so I don't think I can answer that question. I had enough to say, I don't believe so. Now, if there's a way to change that setting on, on um, you know, uh, to delay the delivery, what it defaults to, um, I would have to look just a little bit deeper in options, file options, but I do not think it's there. I am sorry. I don't usually say no to people, but I don't believe it's in Outlook. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on on that one. I, yeah, I believe. I don't do? think there is. Yeah, All sorry right, to say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Um, oh, so this is just a clarification for the earlier question. I wonder if a note could be attached to an email that comes into my inbox. Well, I think actually maybe the answer is really just to drag the note. I think maybe again, I think that's the answer. Drag the note out of the notes area and drag it and drop it onto the email. And then it puts it in anyway. It's not an attachment. It, it embeds it in. Yeah. So I think, again, I think, I believe that's the answer they're looking for. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's it for the questions. Although, uh, you know, I did want to say one thing because I got a couple of questions about the, um, 
about the the video link um, if it's yes. being recorded, and we'll get them. And, and absolutely, yes. So after this is over, when we said we'll send you a little thank you email, there'll be a link in there to the recording for this, which is probably going to be very helpful because I've been in this webinar before, and then I but I've already learned things that I didn't like retain in the first one. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Does that ever happen to right. anyone? Yes, um, yes, everyone. <laughs> so it, yeah, no, don't worry. This um. This will be available and it will also live forever on our YouTube channel. So don't worry, there'll be um, plenty of access to it. So great. Um, and I'm not seeing any questions come in. We can keep, keep a look, but if it's if it's all right with you, Holly, can I just yep. take over for one second here? Yes, go ahead and end the meeting whenever you want to, too, because I need to get he get heading out, too. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my gosh, Holly's doing double duty. She's actually teaching a class. Yeah, my class starts again at 2.30, so yeah. All right, all right. So just just real quick, um, hopefully you can see my my screen, which is the Accelerate website. Um, I just wanted to point out that the only thing better than a one hour session with Holly is a half day or more with Holly. Um, and I'm just going to go over here to our course catalog, uh, Microsoft Net to Microsoft 365. Just a little quick navigation here. Um, Holly teaches a lot of these classes, probably all of them. Um, mm -hmm. And the class that probably maps best to this webinar is this Microsoft Outlook 365 and Teams Tips and Tricks. This is a half day class and this would be if you have a team of three or more and Holly's really good if you get her on the phone to um, customize this outline. We have an outline, but it's really just a starting point. Uh, and if you're an individual, an indivi an, sorry, I can't talk. Individual, just looking for um, a class for yourself or just one other person. We do have um, online training for individuals, and uh, Holly will be teaching all of these. <laughs> so, <laughs> three Microsoft Office classes. So, you can just look here for the dates, pricing outline, and one Power BI class, too. Um, okay. So, yeah, and you can always feel free to contact us through our website um, up here on the little. Uh, contact button or um you know just uh click to request uh, request training for your group all right so yes we're we're here two minutes past the hour i'm sure people have things to do but we thank you so much for coming there'll be a little evaluation after this if you could fill it out just take a few moments we would really appreciate it we do read them all take them to heart and it's also a good chance for you to let us know what other free webinars you'd like to see Okay, Great. Holly, thank you so yes. much for this. Really appreciate it. And thanks everyone okay. for coming out. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Have a good day. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye.